Afternoon, and you are in the right place. Go back and see Glitter. All you know, Shell, you know, you can call it your MZ right here on SABC1 and Zanzi for sure. Calling was as if I'm not in Bonzi, and this is incredible. See, now I'm trying to make you tell one thing was saying, we are trying to put you. But really, like, there's love and there's love. We see your love. So, who's that? You can't use it. I just can't help it. God, okay, I have this really, really bad fear. But to get any there won't be enough food anymore. I mean, there are so many people lying to Benny, and they're just getting more and more. That's what I'm talking about. That's a great question. But give me get chance on my Fortuna. Super intelligent people up in Zanzi are working on the problem nine to five, making new kinds of food that we can only imagine. That is so awesome. I'm going to get to hang out now. I'm going to get to the table. 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 You guys are filled up and ready to go. Let's get it. Discover the cycle that brings food from a seed in the ground to a slice of bread on your table. Go to the craziest labs on earth to see how scientists are changing food into something we've never seen before. Kindle a new passion for a salad when you see a young scientist work aimed to battle food insecurity. So talk about which nutritions you need to be healthy and where to find them. Get your hands dirty when we advise off a few digital resources and have your career questions answered by the best in the science business. Are you waiting for this party? Let's get this party started. And where food comes from and what kinds of foods we need. Do you guys know? What is food security? Food security is when people know that there's going to be food in the future. Food security is when, uh, well, we know that there's going to be a supply of food. Different countries working together, organizations, NGOs, um, basically trying to preserve food for the future. Food security is to make sure that everyone has regular food every day. And the food that we get in stores, where, do, where does it come from? Well, it depends. Some come from agricultural produce, some come from manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing and industries. Mm -hmm. And it depends where you get it from. Well, that has to be from the farmers. I mean, raw materials, mm -hmm. you know, they have to farm it and then after that send it to the manufacturers mm -hmm. and then they manufacture the food, yeah. It comes from farms and we also import some. What type of food do we need to eat in our everyday life? Oh, vegetables and protein. Why? Um, well, basically those are the things that you need in order to grow. Um, fruits and vegetables, healthy food. I think we need to eat like, you know the food from the pyramid? Like, yeah. the important food. I think basic, like, like your vegetables, your minerals, your dairy, and your carbohydrates. And carbohydrates, um, fats, milk, and protein. Why do we need to save more food now than 10 years ago? Well, basically, in order for future generations to have anything, we need to save it now. Mm -hmm. Because the population is growing and there's going to be more people, so we need more food. Because of the way the, you know, the way we humans are, mm -hmm. we're like wasting everything, yeah. literally. Because the population is growing mm -hmm. and that there's more people. Yeah, I mean, Okay, so if you can know which one again, you'd be able to tell me about your ingredient. How cool is it? Um, well, I mean, chocolate, when you get milk, which comes from me in Como, and the wafer. Um, <laughs> thought so. So next night, get do you guys know that many things have to happen behind the scenes? Come on, like too much, we end up on the plate, yeah. The primary ingredients of our foods are grown on farms all over South Africa and even some in other places around the world. When farmed, the raw ingredients go through processing and packaging before going off to the wholesaler, which are the first buyers. After that, we usually buy foods in the retail sector from our grocery stores. Some of it gets consumed, like Osea when he stuffs his face, and some is just wasted. The biological waste can be used for fertilizer, while garbage-like packaging has to go to the recycling depot. As you can see, guys, there is a lot of transportation involved in this process. Phew! Hey, when I see you say, like a movie, little man is scientist, it made bubble gum that actually gave you a whole 
whole meal that we have food. Yeah, and say, but I mean, wouldn't that be so awesome? I mean, no worries about fats or nutrients. Yeah, ten bag of food. Yeah, one day. Shoot, cut, cut. I'm not a scientist. And in that, he in what sense would you be better? I told him to band. My name is uh, Mohammed Nawshah Dimambax. I'm an associate professor at the Department of Food Science at the University of Pretoria, and then you are in the lab of the Department of Food Science right now. South Africa is facing a problem of obesity and obesity-related diseases, for example, cardiovascular diseases, as well as type 2 diabetes. So we at the Department of Food Science, we're trying to create food that can really help the consumers to combat these diseases. For example, in our first work, what we do, we try to take starch, for example, and we modify the starch. And in modifying the starch, we can make it low GI. Low GI means means first it's going to be slowly digestible and also slowly the glucose which is produced during the digestion of starch is going to be slowly absorbed. First step, we mix the two grain which has been milled first and then we mix it. And the second step, we pour it into the feeder and the feeder will transfer the material into the extruder barrel. Extrusion is a process whereby you use dry ingredient and you manufacture, for example, snacks, or you can manufacture breakfast cereals. The second aspect where we are working, we are trying to see where we can replace fat because fat has been attributed for obesity. For example, we are producing low calorie mayonnaise. So if you modify the food where we can reduce the fat content as well as lower the GI, this will help the healthy health aspect of the consumers. We are also working on sweets here, where we are trying to reduce the sugar content of sweets. Basically, if you reduce the sugar content of sweet, for example, the, the sweet will, be, will not be as good tasting. So you need to add, for example, you can add modified starch there to make the sweets taste nice. I mean, it, it is soft as long as you can eat it. And we are trying to also make gelatin-free sweets because some people doesn't like animal product. So in these sweets, we need to make sure that the sweet is as soft as the gelatin and high sugar sweet. The food that we produce, we can consider it as smart food. Firstly, it is slowly digested, so it will act as low GI. It is low in fat, so our fat intake will, will decrease. And at the same time, because we are using a fat replacer, it will also enhance the sensory properties of the food. Because at the end of the day, we eat food so because it tastes nice. Also in our department, we do sensory evaluation. So we can taste the food to see if it tastes nice, as well as we can do microbiological analysis to see if the food is safe. The result has shown, for example, if you have a high dietary fiber food, low GI food, this will definitely help to monitor the blood glucose level. And also if you have a high fiber food or low fat food, this can help to decrease the obesity. Yes, and I'm sure you guys at home feel the same way. So take this quick break, go fuel up, and so go on again with more food research. What is your favorite snack on Facebook now? Twitter, spoon of us. You guys like a fresh like me, right? So why don't you check out this clever student's work on fresh salad and get your hands on some handy apps? Let's get it. Thumbs. Mmm, we are back on TOMZ and it's Chablaya Kudba Fetuku. You guys are filled up for the next segment right here on SABC. Why do you for sure? Food, food, and more food. Who doesn't love Kuku Jabet Nan? God, so with the population growing as fast as it is, who is actually making sure that Oku Jabet doesn't run out? Mm. While we can play our part by not wasting food and recycling, all scientists born again are also working on other ways to ensure food security, meaning enough food for everyone. We as Guman Jenga to sing a bunch of plants as a salega. You'll learn to get food security in plant pathology. Amazing now, paper, we plant health. 
We identify and we study organisms that cause epathogens. No me as Buzma, I have a working, don't look epathogen. Epathogen Lenage is a disease. If it's security, one night, I won't start a look at the impact that these pathogens have on which are going to being the plants and how plant diseases can actually be controlled. The study of these pathogens is conducted using various methods, including DNA and protein extraction. We are able to help commercial companies, farmers, and small scale growers to control plant diseases through various means, including integrated pest and disease management. University of Pretoria, Hi, my name is Nancy. I'm a PhD student at the University of Pretoria studying in food safety. The institution focuses on addressing uh, the challenges that face the nation in food security. Challenges like food safety, both for chemical and microbial contaminants. The people of Zanzi can contribute uh, to food security by following basic hygiene practices, such as washing of hands and not contaminating food while handling it at home. Hi, Ikamala Muzama. I work as a senior laboratory technician at University of Pretoria. What I do is diagnostics. I look at uh, foodborne pathogens. I'm a pathogen, I'm a one, sometimes a watolayo, a glenguetu, sometimes a glenofana nama fruits, I'm a vegetables. That's what we look at la University of Pretoria, Gule Division, Suguyu. It is actually important that we look at the same plants, we have the same plants, and the nutrients, and the vitamins, and the same plants. South Africa, one of South Africa. So I research country I'm looking for pathogens so that this is a born uguti, ugudla way to go healthy in it, uguti abadba was ugudla, danga cool. Ma uguti guna ma pathogens are dangerous kubandu, then si funa in the la zoguti swa eliminated for uguti gudla way to go be safe. Ki bega ma pathogens, esa swa tatile from our fruit and water, sa wa faga gula ma ega plate. Uguti akule, so as you can see, Uguti akulele, they've been incubated for 24 hours. So, konamajing zo sebenzi sa inzela, enyi ibiza nye formic extraction. So, engwenza yola, ngitata ichu, open drop shu, biyami, ne, kengzo sati pipeti yami, i 20 microliters of amanzi, Uguti, i dissolve, i pathogen yami. So, it happened of uh, pipette, you can use uh, measure, measure nga yo, a man's. Burning the fire, it is pathogen yami from the egg plate. If you have a man's in, you can use the same thing to mix our fruits and our veggies. So, basically, you can use a man's in, you can use the same thing to water, and then you can use the same thing to water, and you I sing our incubator for 24 hours. So finally, I'm going to shake her and run. Because the pathogen is going to completely. Best thing you have to do is that the microorganisms are harmed by your endling MON and you interfere with the reaction that's happening in the tube. We add a little bit of 20 microliters. Because the endling is going to be able to get the new fire. It's going to be able to get the new fire. It's going to be able to get the new fire. The acetonitrile together in a formic acid, but seven are together, Uguti, but break it open ama cells so you can get a, a good excess, yeah, protein content, yeah, pathogen. Yeah. So, kona manje, nizo kshanganisa, nukshake, seven zisa e vortex. Mokata ugu shanganisa, seven zisa e vortex, e liquid yako is all over the tube. Ganyi futi ne pathogen yako is all over the tube. So, sizo seven zisa e centrifuge. Centrifuge izo zitanganisa, bese izi sa panzi zonke. Okay, now, ngizo tata, only one microliter. Seven zisa nao e pipette engane. Okay. 
What we have done with this extraction is that we have broken open the cells so that we can expose our protein. Okay, so so over layer, the matrix. The matrix here too, it is a laser here to put it as excess a protein, and then from the protein content, it may um shine way to the was we shell out it. It pathogen in place seven zangai. The sample here to my say dry. So if I got a machine in, um shine us shell out it. It pathogen a corner. Kulama place way to. Um shine way to differentiate between different pathogens based on their time of flight. So depending on what protein you are going to at that particular time. The protein builds your muscle and glands, and it's all in yameni, fish, eggs, nuts, and other dairy products. The carbohydrates are the energy for your school and your exercise. You get it by eating ama fruits, like ama apple, bananas, isinkwa, cereal, pasta, carrots, and potatoes. If that is not always a bad thing, guys, get it right. Because it acts like a reserve fuel tank. It keeps your body warm, ignata for your skin soccer and your hair to be healthy and keeps your blood pressure steady. In Yama, Amaganda cheese are pumped with full of good kinds of fats. So start eating that. Yeah, and they have the good kinds of fat. But when I can eat it, wouldn't it be nice if I can eat chocolate and chips? We're filled with the good kinds of fat. I know, right? But since it's not, I guess I'll save that Kit Kat for a special occasion since I shouldn't eat as many of them as I like. I'm going to get to the next one. As you see, I go to look for something healthy to eat. I think we have to eat it. I'm going 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 to eat it. And do you want to find out how you can contribute to the food security with apps? Then stay tuned, we have that coming up. Now we've been working out the most insane appetites and I'm trying to on food security. And just when like our scientists are working to change the way we use food, I want to get cut so much to our own explanations in history and the future. So it is science number nine from it who says and go look Facebook and Twitter. Quite cool, but then it come back because who knows? I don't know what to back today. So I'm pretty sure you guys have seen some crazy stuff when it comes to food and people. I think food history is actually a whole field of study on its own. In Shalogani, you can see how Ukuja Vietnani happens to be one of the most important things that historians actually look at when studying the cultures. Because we're not the only ones that are to love Ukuja. Before all the agriculture developments that made it possible for us to farm, Abantu had to hunt for animals and gather plants to survive. Our scientists estimated Gutu Pega first started about 250,000 years ago. More than 200,000 years later, a flower came into the picture and was made into unleavened bread, which is basically flat bread that didn't rise. In 7,000 BCE, sheep in Asia were domesticated with the help of dogs just before agriculture came into the picture. It was also during the time that fermented alcoholic drinks became a big thing in China. They were also the first to make ice cream from milk and rice. Thank you, China. How awesome is that? These days, it's pretty easy to shop for food online, which is cheaper and produces less waste because you don't have to drive to the shops. You guys might have heard it before, but meat grown in labs is happening, made from cultured cow muscle salt. These pieces of meat can be made without the resources of raising a cow. In 3D printing, food is becoming a trend that might soon reach a point where we can print our own food. And to top it off, they are pioneering an ice cream in the future that is made out of flowers and has no milk or fat. Good news for all the lactose intolerant people out there. Bongobuwa's Utsuka Tegatele community breakfast only came into English use about 700 years ago. Obviously, I got my bendy as you see. I mean, it literally means breaking the fast of the previous night. Kwa ibe tunani, i breakfast, i malega la kuru, just look at how grumpy you get when you don't have Yeah, 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 all right, you've made your point already. Anyways, well, if you guys want to learn more about cooking amazing breakfast, or just to tell an idea of what you put in your body every day, that's what team, check out these awesome apps. Kickstart your day with the Breakfast Food Maker app, the all-in-one tool you need to learn new recipes and get some more information on where ingredients come from. 
To make sure you get all the right stuff in the right amount to keep up with a healthy life, download in nutritional values to your smartphone. This app will tell you exactly which nutrients are found in certain foods and how much you should eat. As always, we love to get hands on. So go on to www.spectacular.com for a cooking 101 class teaching you all you need to know to get started as well as awesome easy recipes to impress your friends and family and me. Now we never met a party or a function and who made sure that the food got here in one piece? Look at the caterers all why I can see a mule like caterers by Nico because the food was up to see and I tell you get up and buy your figure and I'm to go so long. Food caterers do everything from food preparation and presentation to organizing the food for events. It doesn't take very long to study and there's a lot of different places they can work at, like Ama hotels, conference centers, and even their own businesses. Ama requirements are grade 10 or relevant work experience. Recommended subjects are IMAT or IMAT literacy, hospitality studies, or even home economics. Lapuzo Fundagabanzi about professional catering, gourmet cooking, menu planning, customer relations and marketing, food and beverage services, catering function and services, a small business. This could be a highly stressful but fun job. Plus, you get to work with food and people all day. So then if when I cry, you are good with deadlines, why are you acting by you have what it takes to manage and direct stuff, then go for it. If there's one thing we can say though, it's that people will always need to eat food, at least for the next 50 years. So I was telling some advice from Indonesia and I'm clung with one about teen. Hi kids, um, if you want to follow my career path, at high school you have to make sure that you get good marks in mathematics and science so that you can qualify for entrance into the universities. At the universities you get to study undergraduate studies in uh, different faculties like food science, biology, uh, plant pathology and many others. Food science and technology is an applied discipline where we use different type of science together and we look at these science in terms of food. For example, we look at chemistry, physics, microbiology, and also engineering of food. And when we use study food science, you will do a lot of scientific discipline, for example, chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, and engineering. And at the end of your degree, you will be understanding what is the science of food and how you can manufacture food. Facebook guys I love today's show pity it only plays for 30 minutes I learned a lot about solar energy thank you so much guys so we are going to a episode to solar energy and about the 30 minutes it's your MZ and plans who knows me what's my face have you seen the t-shirt design competitions on our Facebook page right Yo, you guys are just so awesome keep them coming on our Facebook page maybe for the final we on the other hand need to get some food in our faces asap and local to film up to the little to www.tomz.co.za for more info and more to get what to social media platforms is what was that time to come now but for now so thank you like on facebook <laughs> Next time on TOMZ. It's on your skin, in your hair, and everywhere in between. Learn about the weather and seasons. Open a photo to talk about how climate change can make our sea levels go crazy. See how adrenaline junkies use the wind to have the ride of their lives. Mm -hmm. Open a photo to discover the clever ways that animals and plants have adapted to some weird weather conditions. I think I'm going to post on TOMZ. I'm going to be a little bit of a show.